Welcome to another Cold Painting Table tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the Fenrir Beast Pack from Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings, and we're starting off with a black and white Zenithal Prime. Now, if you look at the card art versus the box art, um, the colors are substantially different. Uh, I really like the way that the card art looked. It looked very Hyena-ish, um, and I think it's going to contrast well against the rest of the Nords that I'm painting up that are all cold and icy. So even though we have a Zenful Prime, um, I'm basically going to give the Not Mohawk Fur Spike along its back or its beard um, or behind its uh, quads. Um, a coat of dark umber. This can be anyone as dark umber or a medium to dark brown. Um, I'm just happen to be using Pro Curl in this case. Um, in case people are wondering, um, I'm using a Infinity CR Plus with a 0.2 tip needle um, and a Iwata PowerJet Pro compressor. Um, everyone's PSI will depend more based upon where you are uh, shooting and what season you're in, uh, but in this case I thinned it down well enough that I can shoot at 25-ish uh, PSI. Um, the main color here that we're going to go for the model is uh, Concrete Gray. Um, it's a uh, gray-green, kind of. Um, something that was um, still in the warmer tones, but uh, uh, light enough that I could use it as the main color for this guy. Um, as you can see, I'm really trying to angle um, the airbrush so I can preserve a lot of that dark umber in the shadows, um, saving um, all that work that we did initially. And I know like the Zenithal Prime was kind of washed out by the uh, dark umber, but if we leave the dark umber thin enough, we can still kind of see it. So that's, that's what's happening here. So if we have warm shadows and a warm mid-tone, a cold highlight color would be fantastic. Again, trying to take a look at the card art to determine where we want this to be lightest, still following the volumes of the uh, Fenner uh, monster. So uh, ice yellow is kind of my go-to in this case for a nice cold uh, highlight that I didn't want to go touch into the blue spectrum. Um, and we're really just trying to follow along the edges of the Mohawk uh, and the tail with ice yellow kind of had a bit of spurting here that wasn't uh, working too well with me, so I ended up having to thin it a little bit more. Um, hooray for different colors having different uh, uh, consistencies with the airbrush. Um, but normally, I, I don't have a problem airbrushing this, uh, especially with this uh, PSI that I have um, and uh, the tip that I'm using. Uh, To get the mohawk going, I'm using Chimera Colors Honeymoon Yellow. Uh, I got excited and I picked up their their new supplemental line. Um, and I wanted to give these guys a shot. Um, I, it's interesting that they are a single pigment, and I realize that I'm kind of low on the, the camera right now, so I apologize for the placement of the model. We should get that fixed soon. There we go. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's interesting that they actually have a warning inside the... Um, inside the paint kit that all the different colors behave rather differently uh, and if you're ever working with a color that's coming out pretty translucent um, or transparent like this one is you can always add in white um, to make it easier to work with but I'm a sucker for punishment and I'm just gonna go in with uh, one and a half two coats here uh, just splodging on the paint to make sure it gets the coverage that I need to the So the card art had it fade uh, from like yellow next to the skin to, to darker and darker tones. Um, for the mid-tone here, we're going to use uh, orange-brown um, from AK, uh, but any, uh, oh, again, warmer color would work well against the cold highlights that we just put on the fur. Um, and we're going to we're gonna tone it down a little bit as we go across. So if you think this looks like fire right now, don't worry, it's going to change a fair bit in the next few steps. 
So we're going to use some of the Scale 75 instant color line here to, to add on uh, the final darkest point. Uh, this is Scale 75's, I don't know, contrast equivalent if you want to call it that. Um, they're very thin. Uh, they don't quite work the same way as GW contrast paints do. Um, they're very good at tinting um, uh, th through brush or through the airbrush. They don't quite pool as much as GW's contrast paints do. Uh, I haven't tried uh, like Army Painter's line or, or Paleo's new line that's coming out or anything like that, but this does the trick. Um, it's a good tint to make things... Um, I wouldn't say like a black brown, but definitely darker than um, uh, normal. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what kind of term to, to use here, but it's, it's a good way to shift the tone into a darker tone um, for the outer sections of the hair. Uh, to bring all those, that work that we just did together and get a little bit more volume out of the, shade, out of the uh, shaded areas, I guess you could call it the deeper areas of the fur, uh, I'm just thinning this uh, Citadel's Dark Oath Flesh Contrast Paint with water. Um, I know you should probably use Contrast Medium, I just don't have any handy, so water did the trick. Um, all, slapping it all across, creating a nice good seam between the back and uh, the ice yellow. Uh, that we painted um, painted on earlier, uh, and I, I love contrast paints, they're pretty fantastic. Um, you could use something like Reichland Flesh Shade here, or Seraphim Sepia, but I just find that um, when you thin them down, they're really good at creating um, a half shade, half glaze sort of thing. Since it took a while for the backs to dry, I, uh, as they were drying, I, I went and blacked out like its claws, its mouth, and uh, its eye sockets. Um, I'm just going to go in with pale sand um, to pick out the teeth and pick out the eyes, uh, and then I'll go back in just with a black and get my pupils in. I can't remember if I did that on camera or off camera. Probably off because painting pupils on camera is a nightmare. Now one of the weird things that I found about these sculpts is that they're both covered with a ton of runes along their sides, as well as a ton of puncture, scars, etc. Um, I decided to paint them all the same way. If you really wanted to, you could go with like some, maybe some cool OSL or glowing effects for the runes and then scar tissue for the scars or and open wounds. Um, in any case, um, a small brush fluid paint and uh, the color of your choice um, goes in again. The nice thing about Conquest models is that they are a bigger scale than Games Workshop or Malifaux or whatever. So 38 millimeters generally means that, or 38 millimeter generally means that um, details are bigger and chunkier for you to paint. So uh, it can be more fun. Um, as long as your paint's thin enough, you can be working along. Uh, if you get spray over or spill over like I just did, um, you can grab a cotton bud or, or some spit on your finger and just wipe it away. Uh, here I'm going to go in with a cotton bud for a fix, uh, just to show you that there's many ways that you can fix wet paint uh, before it dries, especially if it's just an acrylic. And here is just a quick shot of what it looks like once the beige red is all in. Uh, I love the way that it gives some good contrast against all the other colors that we put on so far. I'm loving the way that this looks. So I wanted there to be a difference in just the beige red, uh, making it look a little bit more fleshy, uh, a bit more raw, if you will. So I thinned down some grizzly brown, um, using it kind of like a wash. Uh, even though it says brown, it is definitely a red, as you can see me painted over top of my hand. Um, it can flow into the cracks pretty nicely. Um, 
You don't need to cover everything that you put in, but uh, it definitely adds on some more depth into all the carvings that we just did. And here's a quick look of what it looks like now that all the runes have the grizzly brown inside them. So for <laughs> basing here, um, there's three colors that I was going to use, uh, hall red being the darkest, uh, and then mahogany brown, saddle brown. Um, but then I realized that Mahogany and Saddle Brown are too close together um, in terms of tone, so I still went with Hull Red uh, and then a dry brush of both of those, and then even using some of the beige red that we had before on the palette still that we were using for all the carvings along the beast's sides, um, I ended up mixing that in and giving that all uh, a dry brush together. Um, nice thing about basing is you can basically slap on any kind of colors, dry brush them up, wash them down, and you're good to go. Um, in the end, I might actually change this basing scheme, but uh, we'll leave that for another video. So here's what it looks like with the dry brushing all done. I'm going to give it a generous all over wash of Endurance Brown, um, but any dark brown wash would work. Like if you want to use Agrax Earth Earthshade, it would be fine. If you want to use any of the plethora of contrast paints, uh, Wildwood might be a bit dark. Um, Core Grunt of Fur could be something in like the redder spectrum if you want to keep going that way. Um, but in any case, you can slap it all over. I uh, love giving a wash to a base because it's just like washing fur or any other highly textured surface, it just gives, gives us some good variation across what we're looking at. And here's what it looks like all done! Uh, wrapped up the Fenner Beast Pack, so uh, hooray that these things can be added into my Nord's army. Uh, what I was saying about the basing before is that I might make a little bit more icy, I'm not too sure. Um, but that's how we're looking at for this unit. Thank you very mu much for watching, and please like and subscribe or share uh, if you enjoyed my content. Have a great day.